Hi, I'm Mikey Sklar at Holy Scrap Hot Springs in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and I want to tell you about our 2 kilowatt PV solar setup that we live off-grid on. So behind me, we have 12 PV panels, and they are each 170 watts, and it comes out to just a little over 2 kilowatts of power, and each day we generate about 13 kilowatt hours on a good day, up to 15 on a great day, and down to 2 kilowatt hours on a terrible day. Here you can see our solar setup from another angle. You can see our dome, which is on the other side of the panels, which is where we store all of our solar equipment. And um, I just want to point out a few things we did with the panels that I would have done differently. You can see the panels here are on 12-foot tall poles, and uh, we did that for security reasons, but it, that has turned out to be sort of a bad idea because it is now very difficult for us to rotate the panels in any direction. We can't go east-west easily, and we can't go north-south tilt easily, so what ends up happening is during the summer we end up having a pretty big loss of energy and if I were to do a setup maybe in another area I would have done a hand tilt system so throughout the day we can move the panels east, west, north, south pretty easily and just optimize for the sun that's currently coming out and that would probably increase us by a number of kilowatt hours per day. This is our dome that we built here out of uh, pretty much rebar, lath, and paper and uh, it's about one foot thick walls and it helps insulate the batteries, which really want to stay at a temperature close to 72 degrees. And what we have in here is 24 6 volt flooded lead acid batteries. And these batteries take a little bit of maintenance. About once a month, I have to add uh, some water just to keep them full. And it's really important that they get uh, boiled on a regular basis, which means to take them to a pretty high voltage so that they're equalizing, really just perform better for us. So these batteries are warranted for seven years, and I think because we rarely go below 80% with them, that we can probably keep these batteries going for about 20 to 30 years uh, with regular maintenance and even desulfation if necessary. We made a mistake when we purchased our batteries. Basically, we bought them uh, two years ago, and then we left them uh, out in the yard for about a year, just sort of covered in plywood and papercrete, and uh, they were getting cold, they weren't getting regular charges. This was a mistake. Uh, if I were to do it again, I would have bought batteries at the very last minute. I probably would have just bought batteries that were in town as opposed to having them shipped here because it's a hazmat material and it's very expensive to get your uh, batteries custom shipped. And uh, maybe even used old batteries and desulfated them so it's a virtually uh, a free battery. You could take out about a third of the system expense. In the center here we have two charge controllers. These are Outback NX60s. And they regulate the charge that goes to the batteries. So they know to put the batteries in equalize mode, float mode, absorb mode. They just make sure that the batteries are getting a good regular daily regimen and they're not getting overcharged and that they're not getting undercharged. That they'll cut out before the power gets too low. And then out to the sides, we have a, uh, a pair of Outback inverters. These are about 4,000 watt inverters each. And these inverters, um, are both set up to give us 110 volt. So basically we normally use one 110 volt inverter for running our usual loads, but when we kick on an air compressor or if we kick on um, a, pump, a well pump with a 220 load or an electric dryer, then the second inverter kicks in and it gives us our um, 220 power. So this is basically called stacking, and this is a common thing that's done. We also have uh, two E-panels. Uh, these are the white boxes that the inverters are hanging off. And these E-panels um, were done by an electrician. So basically, we set up as much infrastructure as possible. The panels, get the batteries in place, get the poles in, get the dome up, get the rack in place uh, for all the equipment to uh, hang on that you see here. And then we just brought in an electrician to start connecting it all. And there's really nothing wrong with doing that. And that got us what really counts, which is our certification here. And once we were a certified installment, we qualified for tax credits. So our system, which has a cost of about $30,000, has about $9,000 in tax credits. All right. All right. This little box here is what really controls the power to the rest of the property. And what this box does is it's a bunch of breakers, and we can shut off the power from the panels coming into the dome. So if we didn't want to charge the batteries or need to do some maintenance, we can also shut off the breaker that leaves the dome. So if for some reason we needed to switch to grid power, uh, I can just shut off the RV park breaker and then run across the, run across the yard and turn on our city power. 
which we do every few months just to really bring the batteries up to a complete charge as well as to uh, if we're getting really low on power because we've had some gray weather or something. So recently it's been raining, we had some gray weather, so I just shut off the system for two days to let it hit a complete charge so we don't go too low on the batteries. This is how we can keep our batteries going for decades as opposed to just you know five to ten years by never going too deep.